Autodromo Nazionale di Monza, one of the gemstones of Formula 1 and home to the most established team in the sport, Ferrari. And now what a history the pair have, not only alone, but as well as when both join together, in that way that only Italians can, especially when you consider the passionate Tifosi. Firstly, 1988 played nicely for Ferrari, with a 1-2 finish, only one month after Enzo Ferrari's death, after the unlikely event of a double McLaren Honda retirement, partially thanks to Schlesser. Then in 1999, more luck for Ferrari, as their arch nemesis at the time, Mika Hakkinen, spun out in a very rare mistake for the ice cool Finn. Even when having to race side by side, the magical Italians can seemingly pull it off on their home turf like no one else can. Take 2010 where Alonso is able to jump button in the pit stops by the tightest of margins to take the win for Ferrari once again. And even when Ferrari can't deliver, the Italians always find a way, with a win for the Faenza based Scuderia Toro Rosso team and Sebastian Vettel. However, this year may be a different story, with the low drag high speed Williams car perfectly suited for this track, and with them hitting 230 miles an hour in practice, they seem like prime candidates for the race win. But can the Italians yet again cause another magical upset here in Monza in 2015? With Italy basking in magnificent sunshine, qualifying got underway here in Monza. After a pile of traffic impacted the Williams of Felipe Massa's first lap, and then with him running out of fuel right at the end of his second lap, it was generally a very scruffy session for him but he still easily made it into Q2. This meant that the cars eliminated from Q1 were, much like in Belgium, the cars that have very underpowered engines compared to the Ferrari and Mercedes engines. 20th is Jensen Button who decided not to set a lap for whatever reason, but a reliability issue with the Honda engine on this very tough track for engines is entirely possible. 19th is Will Stevens and 18th is Roberto Meri in the two manners with their 2014 spec Ferrari engines. 17th is the Red Bull of Daniel Kvyat and 16th is the Toro Rosso of Carlos Sainz which both use the famously underpowered Renault power unit. Q2 and Felipe Massa was able to once again make it easily through to the next qualifying session on the prime tyres which you'll have to start the race on. The cars eliminated from Q2 were the remaining Renault and Honda powered cars of Max Verstappen in 15th and Fernando Alonso in 14th. Then the Ferrari powered Salvo Felipe Nasa and the Mercedes powered Force India line up 13th and 12th, surprisingly just behind the final Renault powered car driven by Daniel Ricciardo in 11th. Q3 came and went and it ended with Felipe Massa almost a second ahead of the second place man Nico Rosberg. While we expected the Williams to do well, no one expected a performance quite like this, which is even more impressive as the other Williams of Valtteri Bottas is down in 5th. It's also interesting to note that we haven't seen dominance in qualifying quite like this since the Canadian Grand Prix. But not only was Massa 1 second ahead of 2nd place man Nico Rosberg, Rosberg was a second quicker than the 3rd place man Lewis Hamilton. The Ferraris are only 4th and 7th at their home race, with Raikkonen even being outpaced by the Sauber of Marcus Ericsson. So can the Ferraris claw their way to the win tomorrow? It seems unlikely at the moment, but they've done it in far more unlikely circumstances. So what can happen at tomorrow's race? So here we are on the grid for the Italian Grand Prix. As you can see a beautiful sight in front of us, because that's a clear run down to Retifilio and you know sunny blue skies here in Italy, and obviously we know the incidents that's been, that have been caused in the Retifilio in the past, so it's a good thing to be at the front of that. But because he's starting on the prime tyres, because that's the lap time, where well, those are the tyres we're using Q2, a two-stop strategy, so we're going to be slow at the start of the race, but quicker than the AI at the end of the race, which are starting on the option tyres. So a different strategy um, we're doing there. But as you can see, the five lights are now lighting up for the start of the race, and they're going to be going out now, and as you can see, 
we got off to a bit of a smoky start as per usual. I think Nico Rosberg's got the jump on us. And as Lewis Hamilton, actually, I think he might have. And I think Sebastian Vettel has as well. We're right side by side with him. And we've got the outside line going into the Retafilio. Now we've got past Vettel, have we? And then we're alongside Hamilton. We've got a poor run out of the Retafilio. So now we've gone from first to fourth from the start, you know, from the start to the end of the Retafilio. But we're going to use a straight line speed to try and get past Vettel and Hamilton. And have we done that? Yes, we have. We've overtaken two cars going into the chicane. And I think we've just about been able to get past Hamilton. Yes, there we go. So we've we're back up into second. We're behind Nico Rosberg, who's pulled out about two seconds already, thanks to all that battling. And now Nico Rosberg is flying, and he's been able to redeem himself from, you know, the poor season he's had. You know, the poor season he's had already, um, but he's recovered that in the last race, and now in this race, he's leading it. So, you know, but we've seen how strong the Williams has been this weekend with his straight line speed, so you definitely can't count out Massa yet. And now Valtteri Bottas, this is just a lap later, Valtteri Bottas in the Williams. In fourth, and you can't count him out either because he's got back past, well, not back past, but he's got past uh, Vettel. He's got past Vettel, yes, but will he get past Lewis Hamilton? I think he will because we've seen the straight line speed that the Williams has. And is he going to get past, obviously, no DRS at this point in the race? But yes, he has got past. He's going to get past Lewis Hamilton, and that is fantastic stuff. So it's not a Williams 1 2, but it's Williams second and third at the minute, unless Hamilton is able to make the move back. And is he? He could do, but I think Bottas has got a good launch um, from the exit of Retafilio. And I think Valtteri Bottas has been able to make that move stick. So it's a Williams second and third, and that's fantastic for the Constructors' Championship, which is what we're fighting for this race. And now we've, well, we've had a bit of a, um, a fishtail coming out of the second Lesman. There's a green flag, there's some incident behind, but Valtteri Bottas has got past us. But, you know, it's not too big of a deal because it's still a Williams car. But here's what happened. This is Lewis Hamilton. He went straight into the back of Valtteri Bottas. He's lost his front wing. And that's completely ruined his strategy because he's got to do an extra stop. And really, Hamilton's race has been ruined thanks to him losing that front wing. And, you know, so now Valtteri Bottas has got past. It's not too big of a deal because he's still a Williams car. But really, you know, we, we can easily get back past him. So we're going to do that. We got the DRS. We got past him before the DRS. And that shows just how much speed, you know, even my Williams car, you know, even Felipe Massa's, the setup on his car is just more tailored to straight line speed than Bottas is. But obviously Bottas, because he's still in the Williams, has fantastic straight line speed. But as you can see, Nico Rosberg, several seconds ahead of, um, already, which is quite worrying. And now we're starting on the prime tyres, which are supposed to have more endurance than the options. But as you can see, our tyres have had it. We're going to have to come into the pits already. And no one else has actually come into the pits yet. I think apart from Nico Hülkenberg, who's doing a free stop, no one else has come into the pits yet. So that's really weird how... Rosberg on the option tyres hasn't come in yet, or anyone else for that matter, you know, which is really, really weird to see, considering, you know, we're on the tyres which are supposed to last longer, but we're going to come into the pits on the option tyres, Sebastian Vettel's doing the same thing as us, I'm um, coming in at the same lap, but he's on the option tyres, so it shows what poor tyre wear we have, and we might have to convert to a free stop strategy, but I think that's going to completely ruin our chance of winning the race if we do that. But anyway, we're going to leave the pits. We're in 7th place. That's uh, Fernando Alonso ahead of us in 6th. So, considering he's got a Honda engine, he's done amazingly around Monza. You know, to be in 6th, also, it's, provis you know, it's provisional. But he's the fact is, he's in 6th for the time being. That's fantastic for him. Because, you know, you'd expect him to be in about 18th or 17th, not 6th. Um, not so, that's fantastic for him so far, this race. And now we've got Sergio Perez leaving the pits. Now, what will happen here? So we've got him leaving the pits, coming down to the first corner. Now, what will happen here? So, coming down, there's no one near him at the minute. Although there is, actually, there's the, uh, the Toro Rosso Carlos Sainz. Now, they just have a coming together. Yes, just a racing incident, and Sergio Perez just clips um, Carlos Sainz. You know, there's nothing malicious in that. It was just a sheer racing incident. But now, Perez is actually holding up quite a few cars, like Lewis Hamilton was the notable one in the Mercedes. Now, Perez, he might well have got a penalty for illegal blocking there, but either way, it's cost him a lot of time and it's completely ruined his race. So now we're up into fifth, thanks to a couple of cars pitting there. Um, and who's that in the pits? I think that's Valtteri Bottas in the pits. As you can see, he's saying a purple lap time, the fastest lap of the race so far. And we're up into fourth, thanks to Valtteri Bottas pitting, but we've still got Raikkonen, Ricciardo and Rosberg all ahead of us on the option tyres who haven't pitted yet. So... Really, I don't know what's going on with the tyre wear this race. I think maybe we just, maybe we set a lot of laps in qualifying in Q2, but I don't remember doing. We can't set more than two, so I don't know what what's going on with the tyre wear at the minute. Um, 
fair way, skipping on a lap later, we got past another car, that's Kimi Raikkonen, so Ricciardo and Rosberg are still ahead. And now, um, coming on a lap later, Ricciardo's um, into the pits now, so we're going to be up into second. The question is, is where's Nico Rosberg? If you look at the map, he, he's already come out ahead of us. But, you know, what we'll really be able to gauge is if you... If you look ahead, if you look into the distance at the Red Tofilo, you should you should just about um, just about be able to see Nico Rosberg. So he's come out of the pits ahead of us. And so we've been able to close the gap. We were about ten seconds behind him going into the pits. We're now only about five seconds behind. So we close the gap. But considering it looks like he's doing a one-stop strategy, considering he pitted in so late, we ideally want to be ahead of him. And that's because he does Nico Hulkenberg in last, because Hulkenberg's doing a three-stop strategy weirdly. Um, considering this track doesn't have too high a tyre wear. Well, we, we say that, but our, you know, our first stint, we can't disprove that. But anyway, we're behind Nico Rosberg, who had a bit of difficulty getting past Hulkenberg, weirdly, considering they're both German. Um, we've been able to use the straight line speed to get into first, but considering we're doing a stop extra in Rosberg, it's kind of not really... It doesn't really mean much, especially as Nico Rosberg is looking like he's going to get back past us. As you see, I think Rosberg going into the sky is a chain. Um, has got past us. Yes, he has actually. Um, but we'll be able to slipstream going down to the Parabolica. Um, and I think we should be able to get back past him. This is, you know, the battle for the lead. So this is crucial, obviously. It's only provisional since we're doing different strategies, but still we want to get ahead of him. You know, that's crucial. But we've got back ahead of Nico Rosberg. So we're leading this race for the time being. But will Rosberg have the DRS on us? No, we're actually going to go into the pits. So this is our second and hopefully final stop. This depends what lap it is, the lap counter. As you can see, lap 19, yes, we've been able to make these option tyres last longer, or just as long, rather, as the prime tyres. So I don't know what that's all about. I think it's because the fuel's been decreased, so there's been less weight, less stress burn to the tyres. Because we've been able to make the prime tyres last nine laps and the option tyres. So, you know, we'll be able to, you know, these option tyres are going to carry us to the end for another nine laps then. And we're leaving the pits in fourth so that is the absolute worst the lowest we can finish this race is fourth because that's the last stop we've done and everyone else ahead of us is either going to stop again or they're on the one stop so they're going to have very very worn prime tyres whereas we have completely fresh and new option tyres and as you see uh, Kimi Raikkonen who's doing the one stop strategy was going so slowly because obviously you know the worn um, prime tyres we were able to catch up so incredibly quickly and we're going to be able to get past him very easily using the DRS and we're up into third place so that's a podium place and as you can see Valtteri Bottas in second so we could have a double Williams podium which is fantastic you know for the Constructor Championship which is what we are fighting for this race because Hamilton's you know leading the Drivers Championship by quite some way might not be a, after this race thanks to you know the incident he got involved in losing his front wing we, hopefully we'll be able to use the DRS on Valtteri Bottas he should easily let us go because he knows we're doing different strategies we're flying at this part in the race um, got past, you know, Valtteri Bottas within a lap, we were able to close that gap. Um, so up into second place, which is amazing. But now if you look behind, you know, we held, we held up Valtteri Bottas slightly, going through the Sky Chicane. Now Kimi Raikkonen, he's going to use the Slipstream to get past Bottas. And now that won't be good, because we want, you know, a double Williams podium. But I don't think that's going to happen, because Kimi Raikkonen has got past Valtteri Bottas. I think he might have the use of the DRS going uh, down the start finish straight. But that's really worrying is, you know, now, we, you know, we've lost points in the Constructors' uh, Championship there because Raikkonen is in third. So now Bottas, he's lost a few points there, but also the fact he's lost the podium place. So now if we look at the race director, what's happened here, you know, Lewis Hamilton down in ninth after his incident. Um, and you could just see the cars are using the two-stop. Vettel's the nearest car using the two-stop. And it seems like the one-stop was actually quicker this race. Hulkenberg doing a three-stop because um, he's always... This entire season, he's always done a different strategy compared to everyone else. Bar Rain sticks to mind where he did the same strategy as us. Um, but now, what's going here? Kimi Raikkonen has had an engine blowout. So now Kimi Raikkonen was set for third place, but Bottas has been able to get past, you know, thanks to Raikkonen's engine blowout. And that means we have got a double Williams podium once again. Let's take a replay of this. And now Raikkonen's engine, it just lets go. Just a puff of smoke just comes out of the car. And there you go, Raikkonen's had to retire. You know, the only retirement so far this race, and in fact, actually the only retirement this race, because we're coming through the Sky Chicane, and we caught up quite a lot to Rosberg. We were about 15 seconds behind at the start of the stint. Now we're only about you know, 9 seconds behind, so we were able to catch up a lot, but not enough. The problem is, is we lost too much time in the first stint, so we were about 10 seconds behind in the first stint. If we were only about 2 seconds behind coming to the end of the first stint, we maybe could have challenged this race, so the first stint had really screwed us over. So Nico Rosberg's able to win the race, 
but we're going to come through in the Williams. Felipe Massa to take second place. That's still a fantastic result here, and that's going to take lots of points for the Constructors' Championship. So I can see on the podium, Valtteri Bottas, you know, taking third place. So, you know, Williams, we got a lot of points here in the Constructors' Championship. And Rosberg, I think, proved, and Valtteri Bottas in third, proved that the one-stop was really the best strategy to go on, considering, you know, um, the, it, as we saw from the race director, the cars doing the two-stop were generally lower than the comparable ones doing the one-stop, as we saw here. Um, so maybe in hindsight we should have done the one-stop, but our tyres were dead. So, you know, you could argue about that, but, you know, what you can't argue about is Nico Rosberg won deservedly. He's been able to turn this season around, and that's the same podium as actually in Belgium, but just a different order. As you can see, Vettel in fourth, uh, Hamilton had a good recovery drive to go into sixth, and um, Ericsson in ninth, so he's actually had a decent result. He hasn't had too many of them this season, only his second points finish this season. Alonso in 14th, so that's pretty good for him. Um, Hulkenberg only just ahead of the manners, so really Hulkenberg's free stop strategy really didn't work, but Hulkenberg's always done, you know, a different strategy. That's kind of been, you know, his forte this season, is doing an extra stop over everyone else. So as you can see from the driver's table, Lewis Hamilton is leading it, but his lead's been cut short, you know, thanks to the past two races, him, Vettel and Raikkonen in fact have all dropped points because in the past two races it's been a Bottas, Massa, Rosberg podium, which means those three drivers have actually caught up to Hamilton, Vettel and Raikkonen, which if you backtrack about three races ago, were firmly in the top three, they were in their league of their own, but now Massa's just behind and Bottas and Rosberg have jumped Raikkonen, so really it's all to play for in the drivers' table, but Hamilton is still leading it by a fair margin at the minute. On to the second half of the drivers' table, and there's not really any changes, apart from the fact Marcus Ericsson has jumped Fernando Alonso, thanks to Ericsson's second points finish of the season in ninth, which gone two points to jump him ahead of Fernando Alonso. On to the constructors' table, and thanks to the results in the past two races, which has been a Bottas Massa Rosberg podium, it means that Mercedes are now leading the Drivers' Championship thanks to both Ferrari drivers dropping points in the past two races and Rosberg winning the Hungarian and Italian Grand Prix. It means Mercedes are leading and thanks to Williams having a double podium finish in the past two races, Williams have now caught up to Ferrari and could maybe mount a charge for the Constructors' title. Finally onto the Nations table and there's nothing really to say, Finland are still dominating it. Germany are now in a league of their own. Thanks to Nico Rosberg finally contributing some points. And thanks to Felipe Massa winning the last race and coming second in this race means Brazil have jumped Russia and Great Britain, with Sweden overtaking Spain thanks to Marcus Ericsson's two points here. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and next time we'll be at the Singapore Grand Prix, which will be the next and maybe last time this season I'm going to be using Will Stevens in the manor, because last time we used him around Monaco, which was another street circuit, be able to get a fourth place out of nowhere. Now, hopefully, a similar thing can happen in Singapore. So, if it does, we're going to be in for a very exciting race. So, I'll see you for that. So, I'll see you then. <laughs>